Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session on stories and listening in humanitarian action. My name is Nazanin Zadeh Cummings, and I'm the Associate Director of Research at the Center for Humanitarian Leadership, and I'm really delighted to be moderating this session. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we meet today, which for me are the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who, as we heard earlier in this conference from Auntie Georgina, have a rich history of storytelling. I acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. We have three speakers today that will each have a maximum of 15 minutes to present. There's a QA and a and sorry, my lights are automatic, so you'll have to excuse me. <laughs> we have three speakers today that will each have a maximum of 15 minutes to present. There is a Q&A and a chat function on Delegate Connect. So you'll see the Q&A on the bottom of your screen and the chat on the side of the video. And I encourage you to put your thoughts in here and send questions through to our audience as our presenters speak. At the end of each presentation, I will field questions to the speakers for about five minutes, and then we'll move on to the next presentation. This is to ensure that all speakers have a chance to answer at least one question. If we keep to time after our final speaker and individual Q&A, we'll have about 10 minutes for a panel Q&A, where I will again field questions to the speakers. Our session will close with some reflective poetry. I'll now introduce our speakers and our poet in the order they will present. First up is Esther Irufaloa Esho. She is a doctoral student at the University of Valencia in Spain. Esther earned a Bachelor of Arts in Foreign Languages and Literatures from the University of Port Har Post Harcourt, Nigeria, and an MPhil in International Studies in Peace, Conflict, and Development from Hamwon University, Spain. Her research interests include peace, sustainable development, humanitarian action, interculturalism, and human rights. Our second speaker is Wakanyi Hoffman. She is the founder of the African Folktales Project an open source resource of ind indigenous wisdom and knowledge, curated and presented as folktales to school children. She is a board member of the Kenya Education Fund, previously worked as a journalist, and is a book reviewer and children's book author. Wakanya is currently based in the Netherlands, but considers herself a global nomad, having lived in several countries across three continents. Our final presenter is Max Kelly an Associate Professor of International and Community Development at Deakin University, Australia. Her areas of expertise include aid and development policy and practice. She has a sectoral focus in food security, food systems, and sustainability at local, national, and international levels, alongside a critical focus on development actors, including civil society, global political economy of development, and social justice. Our closing reflective poetry will be presented by Donna Dejani, an award-winning Palestinian writer, performer, and advocate. Donna lives and works between the Middle East and Europe with bases in Amman and London. I'd like to remind our audience to use the hashtag 2021HLC on social media, and also to keep the chat going and to make sure to put questions in the Q&A. With that, I'll hand over to our first speaker, Esther. The first and second half of the year 2020 was consumed by the widespread of coronavirus pandemic that turned into a global humanitarian crisis of exceptional degree. There is an urgent need for selfless humanitarians worldwide. This paper aims to use storytelling and poems to promote humanitarian action. This paper is divided into two sections. Section 1 presents an original poem titled, Real Humanitarians Care. The poem promotes real humanitarians and their selfless walk towards humanity. The poem goes like this. Look around. Do we care? Why should we care? Who cares anyway, says the voice of the ignorant and the careless. Like a tsunami which is rampaging winds, 2020 came with the worst tsunami ever. But there was no wind. It crept in swiftly but slowly. This tsunami was called COVID-19. 
what a terrible tsunami indeed was going to reach the whole world. Protect yourself. Prevention is better than cure. Use a mask. Social distancing. Wash hands. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth. Was the voice and the cry of those that care. To speak voraciously, many are gone. Not even having a chance to say their goodbyes. Oh, may their soul rest in peace. Let's keep one minute silence for them. I speak of real humanitarians who have given their lives endlessly throughout this war called coronavirus, jeopardizing their lives every day. We pray for their safety. They are there at the health centers, schools, communities, shelters, villages, cities, in short, everywhere. These real humanitarians, we hardly see them or hear their voices, but throughout this war, they stood by the needy and lent a helping hand. Oh, how courageous they are, endangering their lives, not caring about themselves, but about the well-being of others. What more can I say? Real humanitarians, stand strong, stand tall, don't give up. You are not alone because we care. We pray for your safety and for your work. There is hope. Keep the walk. Take courage. Stay safe. God bless you. Thank you. That is the end of section one. And uh, section one promotes uh, the work that so many humanitarians have been doing. It's a poem I wrote just to encourage them comfort them and make them know that there are people out there all around the world that really care section two is a folktale story titled six very good friends and the skills the rabbit tortoise hare parrot nightingale and the eagle it's not just an ordinary story, it's a Nigerian folktale. The folktale talks about several skills in the humanitarian arena and how it was used to help a particular village gain peace, stability and decrease human suffering. In this folktale, I used common characters in the Nigerian setting to depict the humanitarian work of several individuals. I likewise use intelligent and skillful animals to depict the abilities and work that humanitarians do. The story goes like this. Once upon a time, there were six very good friends, namely the rabbit, tortoise, hare, parrot, nightingale, and the eagle. The friends lived in a village called Ocha. The village was governed by a chief called Dr. Oluwatobi. He was married to Brigadier Kemi, and the couple had two kids named Taye and Kendi. The six friends were known for their uniqueness in different areas. The rabbit was known for his love for eating carrot. Every market day, the villagers complained bitterly of carrot scarcity. However, they were unaware that the rabbit usually goes very early before dawn to buy many bags of carrot from the village wholesalers, and by the time the villagers arrived, only few bags of carrot remained. The tortoise was known for wisdom in all ramifications. Her wisdom was very unique and it attracted the attention of the villagers. The villagers usually went to the tortoise for advice and her advice normally led to a turnaround of their situation. The tortoise's uniqueness also earned him several invitations to the king's palace. 
One day, the king asked the tortoise to join his palace intelligence team and tasked her to give them counsel on how to settle conflicts among the villagers. The tortoise accepted their request and ever since, there was progress in the village. The hare was known for his running skills. In fact, today we would call him Ozen Boat. The hare was very vigilant and it was always seeking for the well being of the villagers. The hare was so fast on his feet that he could tell when spies arrived to survey the good of the land. One day, the chief of Ocha village invited him to the palace and asked him to coordinate the security team of the village. He accepted the offer and from that moment, the crime rate of the village decreased significantly. He and his fellow security officers were able to detect and avert any trouble and corruption that came up in the village and neighboring villages. The parrot was known for his endless speech. He knew almost everything that was happening in the life of everybody, irrespective of whether it was a private or public matter. In fact, the villagers called him a whistleblower. Interestingly, the villagers took interest in him because they could confide in him. He only revealed secrets that was of public knowledge. The villagers often kept their secrets with him and to their amazement, their secrets were never revealed to anyone. The nightingale was known for her splendid, beautiful and enchanted voice. Moreover, she was known for her love for prayer. She always prayed for the welfare of the villagers. Whenever there was a concert or ceremony in the village, the nightingale was always invited to perform. A performance always thrilled the audience and everyone went back home happy and rejoicing. Moreover, her performances usually left an indelible and unforgettable mark in the lives of everyone that attended the function. She was a remarkable blessing to the villagers. Finally, the eagle was known for her cleverness, boldness, agility and strength. She was called the village peacemaker and was a warrior. Moreover, she was known for her love for reading, working out, and for her love for humanitarian activities. One faithful day, the village was attacked by a king called King Wahala. King Wahala came with thousands of soldiers to wage war against the village. The chief of Oja village asked her rabbit, thirties, parrot and nightingale to search for the eagle. When they found her, she was seen at the village library sitting in her usual reading spot. They called her and told her that her attention was urgently needed at the palace. Immediately, she hastily rushed out of the library and nearly fell into a ditch, but thanks to the hare, he was fast on his feet and averted the incident. As the eagle arrived at the palace, the chief briefed her of the situation and told her to dialogue with King Wahala. She went to meet him and cleverly initiated a peaceful discussion with him and his soldiers. After a long day of heated discussion, she successfully struck an accord of peace treaty between her village and his village. King Wahala withdrew his troops and from that day forward, no one ever heard of the king and his soldiers and since then there was peace in the village thank you uh, this is the end of uh, the story in conclusion the poem and the folktale story promotes humanitarian care the poem was written to encourage, promote, and comfort real humanitarians. The folktale story represents several sectors in the field of humanitarian work. The rabbit represents real humanitarians working with people in need of food, helping to alleviate hunger. 
The Tartars represent real humanitarians working in the field of peace, helping their community to have stable peace to an extent. The HER represents real humanitarians working in the field of security, protection and safety, helping to reduce and decrease any forms of crimes in the community. The PAROT represents real humanitarians working in the area of intelligence and international relations. The Nightingale represents real humanitarians working in any area but with a passion to alleviate human suffering. The Eagle represents real humanitarians working in the area of peaceful negotiation and mediation, helping their community to decrease war, conflict and crimes. Also, working towards a community with sustainable peace. The Folktale promotes humanitarian care. It focuses on several skills in the humanitarian arena and how the skills can be used to alleviate human suffering, promote peace and stability. Thank you. And that is the end of um, the presentation of my paper.